like this guy you know last videos you know we're just gonna ignore those because they didn't work out they were top tier first of all don't disrespect <laughs> i bless you with. <laughs> okay all right guys thank you for tuning in for this next one today i wanted to take a little bit back seriously kind of go back to some roots of mine so avid tech person i work in tech this guy also works in tech former new year you know this guy's name is lou and we both work in technology we have built a lucrative business off of technology and one of the things that i have done recently is written a book so I'm here today to kind of speak on it a little bit more, tell you guys a little bit about the inspiration to it and you know, give you a little bit fun feel of who I am and why you should essentially read it. So let's get started. So what is the name of your book? The name is The Future of Tech. see right here you got a display what what is this dis display you have right here William <laughs> so so funny story during the whole transition of life I've uh, culminated some stories and references and expertise and I created I made a book hmm. so the premise of this book is essentially the future of tech so anything tech related so let's think about technology from how things have started off from the Enigma machine with the World War II. Let's think how we've came from punch cards to how we came from vacuum tubes to integrated circuits and all of these really cool like concepts and where we're going with that in the future. I kind of help make a more understandable journey for someone who is not only just not technical, but also someone who is technical to have further understanding of these things. The good thing about it is it's all referential and it's all based on actual factual things that are going on. And it's not necessarily prediction, because prediction would be alignment of the stars and maybe it'll lean this way or lean that way. But these are all actual factual projects that are going on now. Then these are my educated guesses to how they will proceed in the next 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, 100 years plus. So for people that are unfamiliar with what you just said, AI, could you kind of break that down? Yes. Yes. So AI is a very general term. The best way I can tell you what AI is, is how we learn, right? It's not necessarily artificial. It's by means of us learning things and by means of our parents and experiences in general. And the way that we train these machines to learn and pick up things are combinations of like sciences that are are developed and yet developed and it's a very interesting thing to do because a lot of what we understand and what we do is attributing to what we apply towards artificial intelligence how i would explain uh, artificial intelligence to a, a five-year-old is the same way you learn is the same way we try to teach and hone in on a kid we learn by past mistakes and experiences we teach machines how to better process and learn from experiences better than we have in previous uh, iterations of our life. And it all happens prim primarily at a blink of an eye. Like these machines can learn fairly quickly, quicker than we would. It take us 18 years to get things right, right? It may take a machine 18 seconds to understand what we need to do. Nice, nice. So what was the motivation of writing this book? So biggest motivation that I wanted is I wanted to find a way that I can bridge the gap towards people to understanding tech, right? I wanted people to have an appetite, have a conversation. I wanted people of like-mindedness to flock to the idea of, okay, how things will change, how things will iterate towards the next years. How can I prepare for that as a business? How can I prepare for that as a consumer or an investor mm -hmm. or provider? You know, all of these things kind of help bridge the gap towards where we see the, the next future, right? And the future of our kids, our kids' kids. And I want to bring better conversations than what has been do done. More meaningful conversations besides political, besides ethical in some sick, you know, like we want the best for ourselves and, and, and humanity, but let's, we want to also be realistic with some of these expectations. And I help kind of provide a clear context that's not necessarily focused on an agenda. Nice, nice. I have read the book. Very good, very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what is your favorite subject? Subject. Thank you.
subject. Yeah. What does it mean? Well, chapter, etc. of your book. Man, I kind of like them all. I know that sounds kind of weird, but I would say the favorite that I usually reference a lot. A lot of people aren't familiar with some of the initiatives that a city cities are doing, right? They aren't, aren't familiar with how life is changing around us. You know, we have security bots, we have autonomy, we have so many different nuances and projects that are going on in a micro scale that are slowly and slowly becoming more ma macro. Chicago is investing more into its infrastructure and also other big cities are attributing to its infrastructure. There's other projects that are being developed and created to help computers be more safer and autonomous as well as how do we kind of dummy proof some of these technologies because there is always a chance that something may happen, right? And one of the, the best topics I talked about, of course, is smart cities, as well as, you know, some of the uh, advertising and um, electric, you know, vehicles and how they kind of articulate as well. But there is one I actually really, really, really like to talk about because really not a lot of people know about is the uh, cryogenics part, which is actually how there's a small facility in the Arizonas that is trying to preserve life in humans cryogenically. So if you're not familiar with cryogenics, basically it's the freezing of pretty much cells, freezing of the body. They're just trying to figure out how can we revive these people who kind of like succumb to different illnesses and diseases to a future where they can come back and essentially be reborn. It's really cool stuff. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very, very interesting, William. All right, and when did you drop this book, by the way? So it came out around May, but it's definitely been a long thing in the making. Mm -hmm. I started, I wanna say, the initial concept back right a little before COVID. I wanted to have something that was more Concrete and I started off I originally started off kind of like his blog post, you know, like hey This is kind of where I think that tech will be in the next few years Or it was just an idea and then eventually it came to actually well, when I make it a book When I make it an actual thing well, about get some techniques and stuff and I've always thought about like, you know This could be an idea, but you always run up the mount mountainous problem of how you start how do you get things done and so many people have asked me like how do you actually write a book how did you what was the front some of the first things that you do and i'll never forget there was a guy he's passed but his name is miles monroe he basically you know stated that like you know as you write a book you write a book from start to finish way before you even start the book so you know the ending of how the book is going to be before you even before you start writing it and that was some of the, that was some of the things I kind of took into it. You know, I started off with the chapters, what I wanted to talk about, how I want things, and how I wanted the readers to understand it. And then it came to a point where just do it. You know, I didn't. I I sat down. I gave as much time as I could. You know, for my day to day life, and I wrote it. No excuses. Here we go. Nice, nice man. So. Nice. Like, it was very good reading. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I enjoyed it. You got, I don't know, like, any type of anything, I want to say, that, that you wanted to add to the book that you never added. Yes. So, there are some topics that I wanted to uncover and have a little bit more expertise perspective on. Mm -hmm. I felt that the cryptocurrency portion of things was a little, it was less than what I wanted to. I'm a big believer in the space, but I didn't go into much of where the future of it is. And then of course the US government could probably benefit from seeing where that future is because they're not much believers in that. But um, crypto would be one that I would love to kind of expound a little bit more on, as well as some more of the uh, space projects and things. I did have a little snippet of kind of like the projects that we have going on, but there's a lot of things that a lot of people don't know about. Of course, we know we're going back to the moon and we're doing little initiatives and things like that, but also there's different other projects that's going on with the different Voyagers. And then we have the James Webb Space Telescope up in the air that's photographing uh, you know the past and the future and it's crazy to think about but of course those are concepts that i wouldn't have time to have covered in that little bit smithed i would love to kind of bring on some more expertise to kind of talk about some of those things and then you know there's also more things that we could kind of uncover within the ai and 
some of the autonomous um, relations and stuff. But yeah, those are some of the things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice, nice. Well, thank you for breaking this book down. It was a, like I said, very good book. I recommend okay. you guys. Where can you pop, grab the book from? So the book is available on Apple Books as well as iBooks. To be continued, it's gonna be cryptocurrency downloadable as well. I didn't want it to be a physical copy due to the reason that I wanted to fully encompass the futuristics of, of itself, right? So you can't really write a book about the future and you're still using paper, right? So I just wanted it to be a future book. So that's why I kind of stick to the ebook. Mm, but smart, smart. You guys, I enjoyed it. I really hope you guys grab it, very good reading, um, especially if you're into tech. And even if you're not into tech, if you want to learn about tech, definitely recommend getting that book for sure. Appreciate it, appreciate it. And um, like I mentioned, you know, if you guys are interested in learning more about the technology and some of the, uh, the backings and findings, there's a huge uh, cluster of references in the back of the book, but as well as through the book, you can also kind of reference different points and when I kind of talk about X topic, Y outcome, and Z, X, Y, Z. So, but um, yeah, I'm glad I got a chance to talk with you about this. And uh, you know, like you said, if you're interested in learning more about the futures of tech, please feel free to uh, download it at your leisure. But I, I wanted to say thank you, Lee, as well, as a, as a fellow tech person. For thank sure, you for, for sure. coming into the scene. And if you guys got any questions or something that you wanted me to talk about into the book, please feel free to comment. But also, again, like and subscribe to the channel as we also have different other videos with Lou and Aaron and myself. So look forward to the next one. And thank you again for joining. All right, thank you.